All right, guys, today I'm going to teach you how you can usually repair a Mustang computer. Um, problem seems to be getting more and more common just because these things are dying from old age. But that doesn't mean throw them out. Usually just a couple dollars in parts will fix them. Um, first, I'm going to show you what a good one does. This little device here just simulates the vehicle. When you turn the power on, which is your ignition switch, your check engine light should come on and stay on until the vehicle is actually running. If the check engine light doesn't come on, that's a bad thing. Your fuel pump, you'll see it cycle for two seconds. You know, you'll hear it. In this case, this is just a visual indicator. But you see the fuel pump came on and shut off. Check engine light still on. That's usually a sign the computer's good. Granted, there could be other problems, but for what kills 90% of them, you'll see that fuel pump constantly run or a check engine light not come on at all. We can throw it into test mode just like we would do with the uh, the test connector under the hood. You'll see the check engine light go off, fuel pump cycle, and then you'll see it begin to flash codes in a second. It's another indicator that this PCM is probably good. This is actually a known good. This is out of my Mustang. So anyways, that's how a, a good computer will usually operate in the car. Now we'll show you a bad one. Okay, so now I have our bad one plugged in. We power it up. You see the check engine light does come on, but the fuel pump never shuts off. just keeps running. You would hear it constantly running in the car. That's a sign that the computer's bad. We'll throw it in a test mode, which would be our jumper. You'll see the check engine light never goes off, never responds. The computer's in what I would call a crash state, which is like Ford's equivalent of the blue screen of death in Windows. So, this one's obviously bad, um, but another point I'll mention, if you have a tune, a custom chip installed on your J3 port, quarter horse, whatever, and you get this happening where the fuel pump runs on. Um, it could be the sign of a corrupt tune. Um, could also be a sign that you didn't clean the J3 port good enough before you put the chip in. But if you're on a stalker and you're seeing this, it's usually because of bad capacitors. So we'll crack this thing open, show you guys how to uh, how to replace them. You're gonna need a T15 Torx for these four, there's also four more on the back side. You'll have two over here, those will be a T9 Torx. So that'll let you get the case apart to check it out. So now with our case halves apart, there were six more screws. They were T15 Torx as well that we had to remove to get this thing out of the case. Now let's look at what the problem normally is. These things just died because of old age. The capacitors in them just leak. And once they do that, they usually corrode the legs of the capacitor. Um, you want to try and catch them early because the fluid that's in it is corrosive. And it'll actually do damage to the board. But if you see that little guy there, you can see the green fuzz. Try and get my potato phone to focus better. That one there is our culprit. We're going to replace all three. Um, I can see this one swollen a little bit. I didn't see anything wrong with this one. But these things die from old age. So, you know. You can see this leg has completely rotted off the board. Okay, so tools we're going to need for this job. One is a solder sucker. I get these at Radio Shack, I think $15. Um, assuming you still have one open near you. Basic soldering iron. Our Torx bits to get the computer apart. And then a really small flat bladed jeweler screwdriver. You're going to need flux. I personally prefer the no clean flux and I still clean up afterwards. Um, 
the stuff is nasty, nasty, nasty. Don't inhale the fumes from it and uh, read the warning label. Some solder and electronic component cleaner. If you don't have any of this stuff and all the radio shacks near you are out of business now, you can get by with uh, rubbing alcohol. A um, couple of Q-tips and your wife's favorite fingernail clippers. The parts that you need all three capacitors. There's two of them that are 47 microfarads. They're rated at 16 volts and 105 degrees temperature rating. You have a single one that's 10 microfarads, 63 volts, and 105 degree um, temperature rating. Now what's important here is that you get the microfarad rating exact. You can't change this at all. So you need two that are 47, one that's 10. Now the voltage, you can go higher um, no problem with that at all. In fact, that's usually what I do. Also, the, the temperature rating you can go higher on. Um, you know, you're talking a couple bucks in parts. You might as well get something that was rated higher than the factory ones, um, which is what I do. And now we'll move on to actually repairing them. Now when we replace these capacitors, you can see that we have a black stripe facing towards us on all three of them. The stripe indicates polarity and in every instance it's facing this side. So you need to keep that in mind when you're replacing them. The stripe on your new capacitors, you can see it there, it needs to face the, the same direction. So the stripe will always be to this side left side if you're reading the label. So now we're going to flip our computer over. We're going to look at where the solder joints come through on the back side. And then we'll take our jeweler screwdriver and we'll just continuously scrape around our solder joints. What we're doing is there's a rubberized coating that you can feel that this board is coated with. And we'll just scrape a little pattern around each joint. Be careful not to dig too hard. You don't want to like interrupt the solder joint between here and here or anywhere else on the board for that matter. Um, it'll do more, more harm than good at that point. So to start we'll just scrape all this stuff off on all three capacitors and then we'll pull them out. Okay, so now I've got my little circles scraped around my, my solder joints. I've taken some component cleaner and sprayed it and a little Q-tip to get any little straggler pieces out of the way. We just don't want any of this rubberized coating to get into our solder joint and contaminate it. That's the reason for cleaning it. Now the next step is to take our solder sucker and we'll put it on the joint. We'll have our bulb squeezed before we actually touch the joint with it. We'll wait till we see that the solder is flowing really good. At the same time we'll be pulling on the back side of this capacitor, not real hard, just enough to get the, the legs out. And once that leg pulls out the back side, then you can release the bulb on your solder sucker and bring the solder out of the joint. If for some reason you mess up and, and you don't see light on the other side for a, a leg for your new capacitor to come through, the best way to fix it is to just apply another dab of solder and then uh, repeat the process with the solder sucker of, of uh, pulling that new solder out. Um, repeat as necessary until you've got a hole in the board where you can uh, put the legs of your new capacitor through. Alright, I've got the offending capacitor out. You can see the green fuzz that you look for. You can also see uh, how this thing is swollen. It's kind of shaped like a bullet where it should be flat on the bottom. On this one here, the leg was actually gone. So when I pulled it out of the board, um, I actually got lucky on this one and the solder sucker actually pulled the leg out. 
if it doesn't, you might have to use like some tweezers or needle no nose pliers to get a little pressure on that leg as you pull it out. But as you can see, I'm good here. I can see daylight through both holes. I can get legs and new capacitors in. So now what I've done is I've scraped that rubberized coating off of this side. And I've also taken and um, used my component cleaner and a uh, Q-tip on this. I'm going to go ahead and do that again just because this side is so nasty. You can actually kind of see some of the corrosion um, stuck to the joint. So I'll get that as clean as I can before I put the uh, new capacitors in. Alright, so I'm cleaned up. I've got my new capacitor in place. I just kind of bent the, the legs over here. My stripe's pointing the correct direction. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a drop of my no clean flux on each one of these terminals. And I'll let it sit for a minute and then I'll just hit each one of these with a dab of solder. Now the method I use to solder these is I will just take solder and build it up on the tip of my iron and then I'll go down and touch the joint. Um, when you're doing it, I kind of like to pump the solder into the hole a little bit, just kind of going up and down on the joint until you see that it's come through the back side and made good contact with the pad and the leg on that side as well. Um, once you've done that, you know you're done. Um, take your fingernail clippers and cut down as close to the solder joint as you can. When you're finished, make sure it doesn't stick up any higher than the rest of these because you don't want your, your solder joint to short out on the case. Um, that's really all there is to it. We'll repeat this two other times, doing this capacitor and this one. These two are your 47 microfarads and this one here is your 10. Um, like I say, just make sure the stripe's pointing this way. And once you're done, you can put it all back together. Now when you're replacing these capacitors, I like to leave the legs a little long. Not enough to where it'll ever touch the case at the top. But one, it lets me see that the solder flowed all the way through. And two, the newer quarter horses have a four pin plug on them that seems to run right into this capacitor. So, the old ones kind of did too, but the new ones are even worse about it. So if you leave these legs extra long, that'll allow you to, to bend this capacitor over and out of the way um, if you're ever going to use a quarter horse. You usually don't have a problem with most chips. Um, some chips do have a connector coming out on that side. I think SET is one of those. Um, but regardless, if you leave the legs a little long, you can move it out of the way when you go to slide a chip on your J3 port here. Alright, so I've got it all back together now. I'm going to go ahead and test it. Fuel pump cycled like it's supposed to. Check engine light staying on. If it spits out codes, we'll be happy with it. And it looks like it's going to. Yep. So there you have it. A successful repair. Only cost a couple dollars in parts to do. Um, now, if you don't have the tools, I'd suggest buying them. They're handy to have anyways, but it's not something you want to get into. It is a service I offer for 35 bucks plus shipping, so, you know, typically 50 bucks, your computer's working again, and probably expect another 20 years, maybe more, out of those capacitors since we're using higher-rated stuff.